it's a matter, I think it's a matter of being afraid of the right thing. That's the issue. It's like I decided a long time ago, partly from reading Solzhenitsyn, that I was going to try to be very careful with my words, and I was only going to say things that I thought, well, to begin with, weren't lies, let's say. I was going to try to formulate my thoughts truthfully. And the reason I decided that was because I thought that the opposite was hellishly dangerous. And I really, I really, I really believe that. I truly believe that. And so, I'm, if I say things and I think they're true, and they get me in trouble, then I think, well, that's not as much trouble as I would have got into if I would have said something that wasn't true. Like, it might be more trouble right now. Who knows, right? Because, and you don't know how these things are going to turn out. And I had this interview, most of you know about it, with Kathy Newman from Channel 4, right? And that was a pretty strange experience. Um, so what you're saying is it was a great interview. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, she was pretty professional when we went um, to the studio, like someone like that is professional, kind of hard surface and glossy and, and, and media presentable, you know, the TV turns you into that. And she was um, perfectly polite in a professional way until the camera went on and then, you know, and then she went after me. And, um, and then the whole interview went, went the way it went. And I thought, I, and I had like 20 interviews that day. And, and so I walked away from that and I thought, oh God, they're gonna take seven minutes of that and you know broadcast it and, and make me look like a complete monster and that'll be the end of that. And that is exactly what they did. Except they also posted the entire thing on YouTube, not knowing at all that it was a train wreck. They had no idea. It wasn't like they thought, oh, well, this is a train wreck. We better put it on YouTube. It wasn't that at all. They thought it was a perfectly fine interview. So then it went on YouTube. And so, well, so, like, my mood changed a lot. It was, first of all, well, this interview went catastrophically. And then it was, well, they're only going to use seven minutes of it. And that's going to be a drag, but I'll probably get over it. And then they put it online. And then there was just an incredible reaction. And then five, ten newspapers came out to play the victim card for poor Kathy, which was now all the online trolls were after her. And I thought that really, really struck me. I thought she's one of the most powerful people in the UK. You know, one of the thousand most powerful, let's say, or the 500 most powerful. She's no bloody victim. And she's play, paid plenty well for what she does. Uh, and Jordan, by the way, don't forget that that night that this all happened, she was she did a video in her car reading the troll, the comments by the trolls, because at that moment she didn't realize she should play the victim card yet. Yes, she that's was, right. She, she was, was still laughing. reveling in yeah, it. Yeah, right. that's right. That's and right. it wasn't until she realized it. That yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then her, her employees said, well, we had to call in the police to investigate. Because that's an unbelievably crooked thing to say. It's like, anybody can call in the damn police to investigate anything. It's like, well, what constitutes a credible threat? Well, there, there are ways of assessing credible threats. You know, they have to be direct and detailed. That's, that's how you assess suicidality, for example. If you tell me that you have a plan, you know when you're gonna do it, you know where, you have a gun, you've thought it through, it's like, that's a credible threat. Um, sometimes I wish I wasn't here, that's not a credible threat. And you see the same sort of thing online. Well, then 10 newspapers played the victim card that poor Kathy was being trolled by, well, at that point, by like a million trolls. Who yeah. knew there were that many trolls? But apparently they were. <laughs> and then I thought, well, God, the whole thing's going to go sideways again because I'm going to come out of this as the villain who called forth, you know, the alt-right armada to take down poor, innocent Kathy Newman. And so it looked like it was going to shift that way for about four days. And then, well, that didn't work. There was a couple of other interviews that started to push back that narrative and, and then it switched back to my side. But look, I'm, I'm making a point with this is when I do an interview like this interview, um, I don't, I follow this rule in my book, rule, which is it? Let's say I think eight. it's eight. Oh, I think it is oh, eight. All right. Um, we, no, we've been doing this for a sorry, while. Sorry, it's seven. Oh, do, well. do what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Okay, so I come to an event like this, and I have an opportunity to say things, and I don't come in here and think, okay, here's a bunch of things I want to convince you of. 
You know, it's I I don't care if you're convinced. It's not like I don't care about you, you know, in, in the sense that you care for people and hope the best for them. But I don't care if you're convinced. I, I, that's not what I'm here for. What I'm here for is to hear the questions and try to figure out what I think about them and then to say that and then to see what happens. Like, who, who the hell knows what's going to happen? But there's here's an, if 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 the world is properly constituted through truth then faith is the willingness to have faith in truth. And so then you say what you believe to be true. And then some things happen. And sometimes they're not so good, which is why people often lie. You know, you tell the truth, you get in trouble for it. Every kid knows that. It's like, well, why'd you lie? Because I thought I'd get in trouble. Well, obviously. It's like, well, that's not a good long-term strategy. It's like, so you say what you believe to be the truth, and then you have the faith that no matter what happens, if you've said what you believe to be truth, whatever happens is the best thing that could have happened. And I believe that. I think that's how the world's constituted. And so it's not bravery, exactly. I would say it's more like faith. It's like, I'm going to say what I think. I'm going to try to do that as carefully as I possibly can. And I'm going to detach myself from the outcome because sometimes the outcome's terrible. I'm at McMaster University or Queens and there's like a bloody mob of zombies pounding on the window. You know, it's a little slice of hell. You think, this doesn't seem to be a very good idea. But, you know, it, the tide turns two or three times in the next three weeks and something comes out of it. And so if you're going to have faith in truth, it can't just be, well, did I get what I want in the next second? That's not, that's not faith. It's like, no, I'm going to, it's in the, this is the other thing, too, that you've got to understand, I think, is that without truth, you don't have the adventure of your life. You see, because if you tell the truth, that means you're revealing your being. That's what you're doing when you're telling the truth. And when you, when you reveal your being, then you're, you're living in the world. You're there. You're present, right? You're... you're, you're, you're that's being there, let's say. That's you. That's your destiny. That's your journey. That's your adventure. That's what's going to justify your life. The adventure. It's not going to be easy. But, and if you hide from your truth, well, then you hide from yourself. And then you're not even there. And then who the hell are you? What are you? The puppet. You're the puppet of some coward. You're the puppet of some dictator or some second-rate philosopher, some idiotic idea or, or a bully you were afraid of in grade six. God only knows, but it's not you living your life and then you lose your life and you lose your soul too. So that's what I'm afraid of. And so, you know, journalists, well, they try to take me down. It's like, yeah, well, that's annoying. And it usually takes me three days to recover. But compared to not having my life and, 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 and not saying what I have to say, that's, that's nothing. It's, it's nothing. It's, it's minor inconvenience. And, and then generally, if you, can, if you can just withstand it, you know, two weeks, you get mobbed. You guys might all need to know this. You're going to get mobbed on social media. Okay, so what do you do? Unless you did something wrong. Don't apologize. That's the first thing, because then no one can come to your defense. So don't apologize. Maybe you even double down carefully carefully, not vengefully, right? Carefully. You say, no, that's what I meant. And if you don't like it, too bad. And you get mobbed. Then you apologize, a different mob comes after you. That's not helpful and no one can defend you. If you can hold out for two weeks, you'll win. Now, it's a pretty brutal two weeks because, you know, if you're a reasonable person and a hundred angry neighbors show up at your door with pitchforks, you might be thinking there's something wrong with you, you know, like you think that unless you're psychopathic and you think, well, maybe I made a mistake and it's easy to waver and to and to back down. And maybe you're also afraid. But, you know, if you scoured your conscience and you're careful and you said what you had to say, then leave it lie. And if and they'll throw the people who are playing this game will throw everything they can at you for two weeks. And if it doesn't stick, you're done. And then the next time they try it, 
it doesn't work as well as it did the first time. And by the 50th time they try it, like as far as I can tell, carefully, the people who have enmity for me are out of ammunition. They're done. I read hit pieces now and I think, oh, you just copied the hit piece from two months ago. It's like, I'm perfectly habituated to that. They're out of ammunition. And maybe, you know, like someone creative could still come up with some more ammunition. Maybe that'll happen at the Q&A. But it's not bravery, man. It's faith in the, in the redeeming power of truth. And that's different.